Hello students, it's your history teacher again and this is another online lecture for you instead of normal lesson that we would probably have today and it will be about the War of the Roses and I suppose this could be really interesting for you. It happened between the years 1455 and 1485 so exactly 30 years so it was also longer conflict as almost every conflict during the Middle Ages. You know, everything was happening really slow, the transfer of inf information was slow, so usually these battles and conflicts were really lasting for a longer period of time. And of course it was not every day, so there were a lot of days during these 30 years when there were, there was like no conflict but it was still going on somewhere in the background okay so you should never know when the other side will strike this conflict happened after 100 years war that we know took more than 100 years exactly 116 years and after this war England was in an economic crisis due to the civil war started and it is the war of the roses that I will talk about today well you know after every war the countries the both sides are usually devastated this is because they lo they usually lose a lot of people so who will die in the war they lose a lot of money that they had to pay for their weapons, for their supplies. So it's another thing that is really terrible about war. And the last thing is that country is also devastated physically. I mean that usually fields that should be used for the agriculture were used as battlefields. So this means that they are destroyed for agriculture and it's not possible to grow crops like wheat, barley and so on on it. So the people are usually starving after after the war. So there is usually economic crisis. So people are really unsatisfied with their situation. Also like poor and rich without differences. We know that civil war is kind of conflict where there is fighting inside like one country so we call it also fratrical struggle this means that like inside basically like one family one nation there are two sides that are fighting each other and the war of the roses was conflict exactly like that it was between the two most powerful families in the country and these were the Lancasters and the Yorks. So House of Lancaster and House of York. It is called the War of the Roses because these two houses had their coat of arms, their symbol. Uh, in their symbol there was rose. The Lancasters had red rose and the Yorks had white rose. Okay, This is how we can distinguish them. This is important for me. So you will know that there were these two families. They had one had red rose, one had white rose. So please like memorize which one had which rose. And the aim, the main conflict basically between these two families was that every side, like each of these families, wanted to make a member of their family a king of England. So it was going on for 30 years and for that time each side was successful at different times. So one time the Lancasters had King of England, the next time the Yorks and so on. So why we call it the war? It's basically not, it doesn't sound like something bloody. But well, there was a lot of killing between these two houses and it a lot of looked like Game of Thrones and I also prepared a video for you I will show you like in the in the end of this 
and you will really see that actually this war inspired the author of Game of Thrones to write his stories. So this is like fun fact, you will not need to know all of these uh, rulers. It's not important for me. For me, it's just that you will know the causes of the conflict, okay? What was behind it, why it even happened, and what was it all about. So, there was a lot of killing between the family when they were trying to reach their main goal to make member of their family King of England. Uh, this war damaged, damaged the whole country and all family members almost killed each other. So, it was really bloody conflict even though it was just going on between two family two families so i will not tell you like it all went even the afternoon even because it's really not important for me it you will just see it in the video but the consequence is that the war ended when henry tudor he was from the house of lancaster defeated richard the third of house of york in the Battle of Bosworth. So the Lancasters won actually in the end, but not really, because he ended it with by the marriage with Elizabeth of York. And this is how they ended the fighting and they settled, they established the new house. And this was the house of Tudor or the Tudor dynasty. So this king, Henry Tudor, he became Henry VII, because as I mentioned, Henry was a really popular name among the English kings, and he established this dynasty. As you can see in the picture in the top of the presentation, you can see that Lancaster, Red Rose, York, White Rose, and Tudor, these are two roses together. So the red one is like in the background, and in the middle, in the foreground there's white rose so it was the symbol that they are united and there should be conflict no more the tudor dynasty i suppose that most of you have heard about this dynasty and we will mention them again but the most famous king of this dynasty henry the eighth okay but it will be already the modern period so not in the middle ages this is where we will end the Middle Ages for Britain because after this war, period of consolidation and the Golden Age began. So we consider the Tudor dynasty as period of the Golden Age because there were no more conflicts like this. They had already problems with France solved in Hundred Years' War. They had already solved problems within their own dynasties so they established to the dynasty that was strong and so there was no more obstacle in their way to become really successful kingdom so for me this is everything now i will just play you the video so you can watch it and there will be more names and more to the context of the war but i will not want you to remember it it is for better understanding and it's really for that great comparison why the war of the roses was used as inspiration for the game of thrones so enjoy the video as far as we know medieval england was never invaded by ice zombies or terrorized by dragons but it was shaken by a power struggle between two noble families, spanning generations and involving a massive cast of characters with complex motives and shifting loyalties. If that sounds familiar, it's because the historical conflicts known as the Wars of the Roses served as the basis for much of the drama in Game of Thrones. The real life seeds of war were sown by the death of King Edward III in 1377. Edward's oldest son had died before his father, but his 10-year-old son, Richard II, succeeded to the throne ahead of Edward's three surviving sons. This skipping of an entire generation left lingering claims to the throne among their various offspring. 
particularly the Lancasters, descended from Edward's third son, and the Yorks descended from his fourth son. The name of the ensuing wars comes from the symbols associated with the two families, the White Rose of York and the Red Rose of Lancaster. The Lancasters first gained the throne when Richard II was deposed by his cousin Henry IV in 1399. Despite sporadic unrest, their reign remained secure until 1422, when Henry V's death in a military campaign left an infant Henry VI as king. Weak-willed and dominated by advisors, Henry was eventually convinced to marry Margaret of Anjou to gain French support. Margaret was beautiful, ambitious, and ruthless in persecuting any threat to her power, and she distrusted Richard of York most of all. York had been the king's close advisor and loyal general, but was increasingly sidelined by the queen, who promoted her favorite supporters like the earls of Suffolk and Somerset. York's criticism of their inept handling of the war against France led to his exclusion from court and transfer to Ireland. Meanwhile, mounting military failures and corrupt rule by Margaret and her allies caused widespread discontent. And in the midst of this chaos, Richard of York returned with an army to arrest Somerset and reform the court. Initially unsuccessful, he soon got his chance when he was appointed protector of the realm after Henry suffered a mental breakdown. However, less than a year later, Henry suddenly recovered and the queen convinced him to reverse York's reforms. York fled and raised an army once more. Though he was unable to directly seize the throne, he managed to be reinstated as protector and have himself and his heirs designated to succeed Henry. But instead of a crown, York's head acquired a pike after he was killed in battle with the Queen's loyalists. His young son took up the claim and was crowned Edward IV. Edward enjoyed great military success against the Lancasters. Henry was captured, while Margaret fled into exile with their reportedly cruel son, Edward of Westminster. But the newly crowned king made a tragic political mistake by backing out of his arranged marriage with a French princess to secretly marry the widow of a minor noble. This alienated his most powerful ally, the Earl of Warwick. Warwick allied with the Lancasters, turned Edward's jealous younger brother George against him, and even briefly managed to restore Henry as king. But it didn't last. Edward recaptured the throne, the Lancaster prince was killed in battle, and Henry himself died in captivity not long after. The rest of Edward IV's reign was peaceful, but upon his death in 1483, the bloodshed resumed. Though his 12-year-old son was due to succeed him, Edward's younger brother Richard III declared his nephews illegitimate due to their father's secret marriage. He assumed the regency himself and threw the boys in prison. Though no one knows what ultimately became of them, after a while the princes disappeared and Richard's power seemed secure. But his downfall would come only two years later, from across the narrow sea of the English Channel. Henry Tudor was a direct descendant of the first Duke of Lancaster, raised in exile after his father's death in a previous rebellion. With Richard III's power grab causing a split in the York faction, Henry won support for his royal claim. Raising an army in France, he crossed the Channel in 1485 and quickly defeated Richard's forces and by marrying Elizabeth of York, elder sister of the disappeared princes, the newly crowned Henry VII joined the Two Roses, finally ending nearly a century of war. We often think of historical wars as decisive conflicts with clearly defined winners and losers, but the Wars of the Roses, like the fiction they inspired, show us that victories can be uncertain, alliances unstable, and even the power of kings as fleeting as the seasons. I hope this was interesting for you and will help you to remember the most important information about the War of the Roses. Okay, thank you, stay healthy and see you at the next online lecture. Bye!